once again to the National Science and Math Quiz. Today's contest is the fourth of our preliminary stage contests, and it's between Achimota School and Keta Senior High School. On my left, we have Achimota School represented by Benala Senior Kubo SS3, Queen Andreas SS3, Apo Frank Pepe SS3. You are very welcome, gentlemen. I've been told that Achimota School, you are very scientifically minded. <laughs> so how do you use science and mathematics in your everyday campus activities? One example. Drinking, even in our talking. In your eating, your drinking, your talking. What about your sleeping? We sleep science. Good. <laughs> On my right, we have Keta Senior High School, represented by... Cordell Vitus, SS3. Baba Wilson, SS3. Ajibolos Nicholas, SS3. You are also very welcome. Keta Senior High. What is special about Keta? Go ahead, Wilson. Okay, we have a lot of sun over there, so a glass industry can be built over there. Thank you. That's good to know. All right, contestants. This contest comes to you in the usual five rounds. We start with the first, the round for fundamental concepts. The questions in this round are very, very simple. We only want to test your knowledge of basic principles in science and mathematics. If you answer your question correctly, three points. If it's incorrect, it's passed on to your opponent for a bonus point. Okay? If a question requires calculations, you have 30 seconds to provide an answer. If there are no calculations, 15 seconds. Let's begin with you, Keta Senior High School. You have one attempt to answer this question. How does the average kinetic energy of matter manifest itself? How? Yes, Wilson. It manifests as temperature. Yes, I stand for <laughs> Yes, the hotness or the coldness of that matter. At Motor School, you also have one attempt to answer your question. At what temperature is the average kinetic energy zero? Yes, uh, Hassan. At the absolute zero. That's right. <laughs> The next pair of questions are also to be answered in one attempt. Keta, what name is given to the surface of the water that collects on a bedrock? Yes, Wilson. Water table. Yes. Oh! Water table. At Motor School, in one attempt, what name is given to the vertical section of a bedrock and the layers of soil that are located on top of it? Yes, uh, Frank. Soil profile. Is a soil profile. <laughs> Next pair of questions to be answered in one attempt. When I get to you, I will give you a statement with a blank fill in the blank. Keta, inductance is measured in units of blank. Yes, uh, Victor's. Henry. Henry's. <laughs> At Motor School, one attempt. Reactance is measured in units of blank. Yes, uh, Andreas? Ohms. Ohms. <laughs> Keta, if the ratio y plus 4 is to y plus 1 is equal to the ratio 3 is to 2. Please find y. Yes, Nicholas. y is 5. That's right. <laughs> At motor school, if the ratio x plus 2 is to x plus 5, 
is equal to the ratio 4 is to 5, please find x. Yes, Andreas? X is 10. That's right. <laughs> Keta. Define first ionization energy of an element or an atom. It is the amount of energy required to remove one mole of an electron from the outermost shell of an atom to form one mole of a monovalent ion. Last time. I'm passing this on for a bonus. Yes, uh, Andreas. This, this is the minimum amount of energy required to move one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous singly charged cations. A standard temperature and pressure. The more, more, more were getting too many for me. No, I won't give the bonus either. The first ionization energy of an element or an atom is the amount of energy required to remove one electron. One electron, not one mole. One electron from each of a mole or a molecule of neutral atoms to form a mole of singly charged atoms or molecules. All right. Achimota School. Define electronegativity of an atom or element and state the units. Yes, Al Hassan. It is the ability of an atom or element to attract, to pull shared pair of electrons onto itself, more onto itself in a covalent bond. Is there it no and it has no unit. I'll give you the map. <laughs> Keta. One attempt. One attempt. Where exactly? I'm serious about the exactly. Where exactly in the body is the pituitary gland located? Yes, Wilson. At the base of the brain. Yes. <laughs> Similar question, one attempt. Where exactly in the body are the adrenal glands located? Yes, Al Hassan. <laughs> it is located on top of the kidneys. Yes. In one attempt, mention one experiment, only one, one experiment or one phenomenon that shows that light behaves as a particle. Yes, Wilson. Photoelectric emission. Okay, photoelectric effect. Other options are the Compton effect and pair production. All right, Achimota School, also in one attempt, mention one experiment or phenomenon that shows that light behaves as a wave. Yes, Andreas? Reflection. Reflection? Of reflection of light. Two out of three. The reason why you are getting two instead of three is because reflection can also be shown with particles, right? Okay, but if you had told me things like diffraction, interference, polarization, then we can be sure that uh, we are talking about uh, waves. So reflection and refraction, those are both waves and particles. Last pair of questions for the round. Keta. The sum of three consecutive odd numbers is 99. Find the three odd numbers. Yes, Victors. 31, 33, and 35. That's right. <laughs> At motor school, the sum of three consecutive even numbers is 150. Find the three even numbers. Yes, Andreas. 48, 50, and 52. That's right. <laughs> That's the end of the first round.
Good morning, class. Good morning, sir. You remember what I told you about the exams? No fees, no exams. That's right. No fees, no exams. Atto? Yes, sir. Out. Oh, hello, hello there. Atto. Can you please send me the money in 30 minutes? Yes. Absolutely. First, get your EaseRich card. Then, go to any EaseRich merchant, EaseRich ATMs, bank or savings and loans company nationwide. Please transfer 250 Ghana cities to my son Atto's account. This is his EaseRich number. All you need is the recipient's EaseRich card number printed on the reverse side of the card. I've sent you the money. Use 200 for your exam fee and 50 for your provisions, okay? Thank you. To receive the money, go to any EaseRich point of sale terminal or ATM and load the money on your card or draw the cash from a bank or savings and loans company or EaseRich merchant. Get an EaseRich card now and enjoy a safer, faster and more convenient means of transferring your money nationwide. Oh, your puppy day. Your puppy day. EaseRich. Easy banking for everyone. At the end of the first round, the scores are Achimota School, 23 points. Keta Senior High School, 21 points. Very well done, gentlemen. But we've only just begun. Anything is possible as we go along. Round two. Round two is our round for applied science. You saw that the questions in the first round really didn't challenge you much. Right? Uh-huh. So the questions in the second round are meant to be more applied. That means we expect you to apply those simple concepts to explaining things you see in the lab and things you see around you. When you get your question, you have 30 seconds to respond if there are calculations involved and 15 seconds if there are no calculations involved. A correctly answered question fetches three points. A wrongly answered question is passed on for a bonus point. And partial credit is very, very possible in this round for partially answered questions. Good luck. Let's begin this time with Achimota School. Your question. How many three-digit numbers can be formed from the digits 0, 1, 2, all the way to 9? If digits may be repeated and no number begins with 0. Yes, Andreas. 900. 900. Peter, how many different committees of five people can be formed from a pool of eight people? Nicholas. 56 committees. Yes, that's right. Achimota. On which road surface is a car likely to have a greater acceleration? A wet asphalt road or a dry asphalt road? I'm expecting a good explanation. Yes, Hassan. The car will have more acceleration on the wet asphalt road than on the dry asphalt road. It's because on the wet asphalt road, the, because it's wet, the friction is less than on the dry asphalt road. Because it's, it's the, Okay. Andreas. Um, on a wet asphalt road, this is because on a wet asphalt road, the car have more grip on the ground, and therefore it can tra transfer more energy onto the road and provide more grip, thereby giving it more acceleration. I'm passing it on for a bonus. Yes, Wilson. On a dry asphalt road, this is because uh, friction provides for the centripetal force, and friction provides uh, for the centripetal force, and this. If the uh, uh, road is dry, meaning the frictional force will be very high, so that the centripetal force will be very high, and acceleration is very proportional to the frictional, uh, the centripetal force. I'll give you the <laughs> yes, greater friction. All right, your major question. On which road surface is a car likely to have shorter stopping time when the brakes are applied? A wet asphalt road or a dry asphalt road? Please explain your answer. Yes, Nicholas. On a dry asphalt road, because the friction on a dry asphalt road is very high and the braking force applied is to overcome the friction. And since the friction on a dry asphalt road is very high, it means the time taken for the car to uh, come to a stop is longer. Good. Your major question. 
which is more likely to become acidic, clay or sandy soil? Explain. Yes, Al Hassan. It's the sandy soil. This is because. Uh, this is because clay contains. Uh, For a bonus, yes, Nicholas. It is the clay soil. This is because the clay soil has a very poor retentive, uh, retention of. It has a very high retention of. Uh, that is, has a, pro, a poor a drainage system. So it can collect a lot of water on it. And due to the presence of anaerobic bacteria in this water, they produce carbon dioxide, which uh, dissolves in the water to form weak carbonic acid, hence making it acidic. Well done. <laughs> Your major question. Explain why the addition of lime to clay soil improves the texture. Yes, Nicholas. The lime contains calcium hydroxide, and this calcium hydroxide tends to clamp the clay particles together, thereby improving the, te the texture. Yes. <laughs> Find the volume of a right circular cone of base radius 5 centimeters and slant height 13 centimeters. You may leave your answer in pi. Yes, Andreas. 100 pi. Try again. Yes, Andreas. 100 pi cubic centimeters. Yes. Find the volume of a right circular cylinder of radius 4 centimeters and curved surface area 40 pi centimeter squared. You may leave your answer in pi. Nicholas. 160 pi cubic centimeters. That's right. <laughs> Achimota School. A bar magnet is suspended in an east-west direction by a thread tied through its middle. Describe what happens to the magnet if it's allowed to rotate freely. Yes, Al Hassan. It rotates, it rotates towards the north-south direction. This is because the Earth's magnetic field is in the north-south direction, and for the, mag the magnet to be affected by the Earth's magnetic field, so it will be aligned towards the Earth's magnetic field. Yes. explain the difference between the geographic north and south poles and the magnetic north and south poles of the earth. Yes, Nicholas. The geographic north of the earth is actually the earth magnetic north. Uh, it's actually the earth magnetic south, whilst the geographic south of the earth is actually the earth magnetic north. And when a magnet is tied to a rope and allowed to rotate freely, it comes to rest with the east north pole pointing towards no, the... try something else. I'm passing it on for a bonus. Yes. The geographic north of... The geographic F... The Earth's geographic north pole is located towards the Earth's magnetic south pole. But they are not on the same position because there's angle between them, which is the angle of declination. Now for a bonus. The geographic north and south poles are points on the axis of rotation of the Earth, whereas the magnetic north and south poles mark the points at which the magnetic field lines of the Earth either originate and terminate or are most dense or are vertically oriented. So two different concepts. Okay. Your major question, Achimoto School. Why is N2O, nitrogen 1 oxide, called laughing gas? Because it's yes, Al Hassan. It stimulates a person to laugh when a person inhales it. This, do you have a reason? Yes, Frank. This is because when you inhale, it, it is able to stimulate the ribs for one to be able to laugh. I'm passing it on for a bonus. Yes, uh, Nicholas. In ancient times, it is used as a chemical on a patient when an operation is to be performed. And after the operation, the remains of it in the, in the person's system tends to cause the person to laugh hysterically. Hence, it is called laughing gas. 
Okay, I'll give you the words. Actually, it's not that they are laughing hysterically. When they are coming out of surgery, it seems as if they are laughing after it's been used in surgery. Okay, your major question. You have one attempt. Name any cation whose sulfide is black. Yes, Vectors. Copper 2 plus. Yes. Organisms in the phylum Umicota, example slime molds, are often referred to as fungus-like. Fungus-like protists. What differentiates slime molds from true fungi? Yes, uh, Frank. Slime molds have biflagellate spores with flagella, so therefore this differentiates them from slime. Uh, they are this. Yes, it's a flagella. <laughs> Peter, even though organisms in the phyla Rhizopoda and Zoomastigena are both regarded as protozoans because they show animal-like characteristics, there is a major characteristic feature that distinguishes organs from the two phyla. What is this feature? Yes, Nicholas. The organisms in the uh, phylum Rhizopoda have uh, they locomote with by forming pseudopodia, whilst organisms in the phyla Zoomastigenia have flagella for locomotion. That's true. <laughs> With that answer, we've come to the end of round two. At the end of the second round, the scores are Achimota School, 36 points, Keta Senior High School, 42 points. <laughs> again contestants well done we are not yet done though we still have a few more rounds to do round three is our problem of the day so far the questions that you have seen have not taken too much of your time maximum of 30 seconds the problem of the day is expected to engage you longer so from the time I ask you to begin you will have three minutes in which to present an answer the problem of the day is worth 10 points. Let's turn over our sheets and read the problem of the day together. Problem of the day. The iron content of a piece of wire mesh weighing 14.4 grams was determined by dissolving the mesh in concentrated H2SO4, adding about 100 centimeter cubed of water and filtering off any undissolved solid. The solution was transferred into a 250 centimeter cubed volumetric flask and more deionized water added to the mark. 25 centimeter cubed of the solution required 20 centimeter cubed of 0.20 mole per decimeter cubed KMNO4 solution for complete reaction. Calculate the percentage ion in the mesh. Atomic mass for iron is 56.0. Contestants, that's your problem of the day. Good luck. You may